Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we'll talk about the sequel series to the legendary Ben 10 classic named Ben 10 Alien Force. It has a total of three seasons and 46 episodes, and we'll go over it from beginning to end in detail. So stick around if you consider yourself a Ben 10 fanatic like I do. As a die-hard fan of the original Ben 10 series, or rather, Ben 10 classic, it came as a delight when I heard of the upcoming sequel series. The heroic, troubled, funny, and kind superhero returning to continue his journey and kick some more alien butt. Oh man, the nostalgia I'm going through while making this video. Before we continue, let me tell you a tale. The tale of a game so surreal, so exciting, so rewarding, that the whole realm spoke of its marvel. What game, you ask? Well, of course, it's Raid Shadow Legends. Intrigued? Come, let me tell you more. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play MMORPG with some bizarrely cool graphics, 80 million players worldwide, and over 650 unique champions to choose from. Personally, there are three reasons why I love Raid so much. First off, the obviously amazing graphics where you can enjoy console or PC level detail on a mobile. Next up is the plethora of amazing boss fights that you can compete in and win to gain even better prizes. And last but not the least is the ever-growing roster of over 650 completely unique champions, including badass destroyers like Sir Nicholas and ravishing goddesses like Arbiter. Honestly, is she not enough of a reason to play Raid? But most importantly, a brand new event, Raid Call of the Arbiter, is in full swing now. If you've seen the show, you'll love that Raid has added some of the new characters from the series as champions, like Artak, who you can acquire for absolutely free. All you have to do is just log into Raid for seven days between now and July 24th. How awesome is that? After all of that, if you still haven't downloaded Raid yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get bonuses, such as the epic champion Talia, along with some energy refills, skill tome, and XP boosters. All of that awaits you. So why the wait? Download Raid Shadow Legends now, and let's get fighting. Seems only yesterday when Ben, Gwen, and Grandpa Max loaded up the old rust bucket and set out that life-altering summer trip. The trip where Ben stumbled upon the watch from outer space that stuck to his wrist, giving him the ability to transform into a variety of awesome aliens like Heat Blast, Diamond Head, Cannonball, Wild Mutt, and many more. Man oh man, was those the best years of my life. But with this power came the great responsibility of protecting his world from the threat of villains like Dr. Amino, Charmcaster, Zaskar, and Vilgax. And our hero fought valiantly, ruining their evil plans time after time. But alas, those adventures came to an end when Ben's summer vacation ended. He returned to school, but him possessing the Omnitrix invited unwanted eyes, like Vilgax, who showed up and nearly destroyed the whole town. So Ben made a choice. He decided to lay down his role as Earth's local superhero and live a normal life, attend high school, find a girl, etc., etc. And if you ask me, it's quite reasonable considering how much Ben fought to save everyone over and over again. So he managed to remove the Omnitrix and hide it inside a box, and it was peaceful for the next five years. But I guess fate had new plans brewing up for the Ben Tennyson, and it all came back with Ben 10 Alien Force when new threats began emerging, and Ben was left with no choice but to put the watch back on. A new threat. Cause a new enemy far more dangerous than even Vilgax was looming over the horizon. In an unknown location, a large white alien known as Hybrid has issued orders to one of his minions. Said minions are known as DN aliens and are created by fusing any living being with a sort of parasite created by the high speed species. The goal of these creatures, named Hybrid, is to erase all other life forms from the universe except themselves, simply because they believe themselves to be the superior race. Heh, <laughs> get in line, I'd say. Anyway, it appears the few beings dangerous and resourceful enough to threaten their plans reside on Earth. This is none other than Grandpa Max, better known to the wider universe as the legendary plumber Max Tennyson. The orders issued to the DN aliens are to find and eliminate Max. Return of the Hero 
As for our boy Ben Tennyson, has been doing exceptionally well for himself in the years since that faithful summer with his grandpa and cousin. Despite returning to a normal life, he's far from an average Joe. Star of his school's soccer team, he's just won a medal and is on his way to share the victory with Grandpa Max. However, when he reaches the spot where Max's RV, the good old rust bucket, is parked, he finds it to be all but deserted. From a distance, a mysterious man watches on as he enters the vehicle to look around. After failing to find anyone inside the RV, Ben is suddenly assaulted by a DNA alien. Despite no longer wielding the Omnitrix, the young hero is able to fight off the creature with his wits and a little bit of technique. After sending the DNA aliens packing, Ben discovers a holographic message left behind by Max. The only thing of note within Max saying alien activity on Earth has increased and claiming he has the Omnitrix. After rushing home and going through a box of his belongings, Ben confirms that the Omnitrix is in fact still with him. Believing Max's message to be a disguised suggestion for him to put the watch back on, Ben heads to meet the one person he can talk to about such things, Gwen Tennyson, the cousin who shared his adventures. After consulting with her, the two have run in with a plumber of the Magister rank, Labrid. Despite getting off on the wrong foot, they're able to work out that they're all on the same side and join forces to find Max. For his part, Ben decides it's time to put the Omnitrix back on and become the hero once more. Return of Old Friends and Enemies Following Labrid's lead on where to find Max, the trio end up crashing an arms deal between a group of DNA aliens and the former knights. Remember them? Organization of power-hungry knight dudes who want nothing more than to rid the world of all things alien? Yeah, them. On top of that blast from the past, they also come back to face with Ben's old nemesis, Kevin Eleven. As a battle breaks out between the trio and the bad guys, Ben finds the Omnitrix refusing to activate. After struggling with it for a while, the watch shapeshifts into a sleeker looking version of itself with a new holographic display showing 10 brand new aliens. Wasting no time, Ben finally utters his iconic catchphrase, cause it's hero time after five days and transforms into Swamp Fire. Essentially a fusion of Wild Vine and Heat Blast from the old days, he's able to regenerate from most injuries, control plants, and shoot fires at his foes. Pretty badass design if I say so myself. During the battle, he manages to take down Kevin, who now has the power to coat himself in any material he touches. Meanwhile, the DNA aliens and Forever Knights flee the scene. The Beginning of Something New Though reluctant, Kevin ends up joining the Tennysons in no small part due to his hidden feelings for Gwen. Loading the group into his muscle car, he leads them to the Forever Knights base. Arriving at a castle, they find both the Forever Knights and a robotic dragon under their control. Using yet another new alien, Echo Echo, Ben creates clones of himself and takes the robot down. In a battle that takes place between the two sides, they learn the true danger of the weapons the Forever Knights were getting from the DNA aliens, their level 5 alien technology that's banned on Earth. The reason for this is they hold more power than humans are capable of wielding, as seen when one knight is vaporized by his own blaster. Unfortunately, Labrid's suit is damaged in the fight, resulting in his death due to his alien psychology being incapable with Earth's atmosphere. While he tells Ben to get to the bottom of whatever is going on, Kevin takes the alien plumber's badge and decides to join them for good. Using one of the weapons from the deal that Kevin still has as a medium, Gwen is able to track down the DNA aliens with her magical powers. After arriving at the base the DNA aliens are currently using, the trio discover how they've been getting around on Earth. They have ID masks that allow them to look like any human they want. Taking off a defeated DNA alien, Ben disguises himself as one of them and sneaks Gwen and Kevin into the base. Inside, they find a massive underground facility housing a spaceship. Making their way to the armory, Gwen destroys the level 5 weaponry that's in their possession. Unfortunately, this exposes them and the hybrid in charge of the ship arrives to face them. Transformed into a massive new alien known as Humungasaur, Ben engages in battle with the being while Gwen and Kevin retreat. 
Despite the strength of this alien, the hybrid is simply superior and launches Ben off the ship as it takes flight. Up in the air, the hybrid orders for the ship to destroy everything in a five-mile radius. Luckily, Ben discovers Humongosaur's ability to grow to an incredibly large size just in time to make the ship crash. With the ship exploding in the background, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin bring their hands together and decide to become a team from here on out. Season 1 On their search for Max, the trio find Labrid's plumber badge responding to a nearby signal. Believing it to be Max, they go after the signal, only to find local police chasing an alien species named Pyronite, heat blast species under suspicion of burning crop circles. Wanting to get some answers, Ben apprehends the Pyronite, only to learn he's actually a half-human half-Pyronite named Alan Albright. The signal they received was from the plumber badge left to him by his Pyronite father. Feeling for the kid, Ben helps him to escape the police and the group head out to investigate the crop circles he's been accused of causing. As it turns out, they're actually circuit boards created by the DN aliens who activate them to raise a giant weather machine. By setting up several of these across the world, the hybrid plan to lower Earth's temperature massively till only they can inhabit it due to their heat intolerance. Together, Alan and Swampfire Ben destroy the machine and clear the young man's name. Seeing how wrong he was, the sheriff apologizes and recruits Alan as a defender of the area. With a promise to support them if ever needed, Alan sees the trio off as they leave. One day, Kevin meets up with Argit, a con artist he's friends with. Needing some specific alien tech, he brings the rust bucket to trade with Argit. Predictably, though apparently not so much for Kevin, the literal rat porcupine thingy cons him as well and steals Max's RV and a cache of plumber tech within it. Luckily, Kevin placed a tracker on it and follows Argit with the Tennysons. Following a series of disagreements, Kevin ends up finding Volcanus, the alien who has the tech Kevin wants. Volcanus has other plans though and forces Kevin to absorb a rare alien crystal, Tandonite hoping to turn him into a literal living mine. Ben and Gwen arrive in time to stop him, and Ben unveils yet another new alien, Big Chill. Using his new freezing powers, he beats Volcanus, and Gwen restores Kevin to normal with her magic. Finally, the tech Kevin was after is revealed to be another holographic message from Max, one that tells Ben to find more of the plumber's kids like Alan in preparation for a coming battle. As the trio travel the country in search of Plummer's kids, they run into Michael Morningstar, who is precisely one of those. When Ben is blinded by his desire to recruit him, Kevin is quite antagonistic toward him due to some suspicious circumstances, and not at all because he was jealous of the guy flirting with Gwen. Young love, am I right? True enough though, Michael turns out to be an energy vampire who's been draining the town's girls dry and does the same to Gwen. With the insane level of power he gets from her, Michael becomes all but unbeatable. That is, until Gwen grabs him and forcefully yanks her power back. While his victims steal their energy back and leave him deformed, Kevin destroys Michael Plummer's badge and the day is yet again saved, all thanks to Kevin this time. Next episode during their journey, the gang discover a high-breed base while searching for Gwen's missing brother, Ken. Here, they're breeding xenocytes, the parasites that mutate other species into DNA aliens. Ken is affected by one, but Ben manages to cure him with the Omnitrix. They go on to find Grandpa Max in the base, but their reunion is short-lived as he later sacrifices himself to destroy the high-breed base and its commander. Oh man, not Grandpa Max. Anyone but him. What a bummer. Next up, on a date with his high school crush Julie, Ben unlocks another new alien called Brainstorm when he's ambushed by a small dog-like upgrade alien. After kidnapping Julie, it leads him to a spaceship with a self-destruct timer running and a galvanic mechamorph trapped inside, upgrade species. Realizing this was a cry for help all along, he saves the upgrade named Bozzy. Later, after repairing his ship, he departs from Earth, leaving the little upgrade dubbed Ship in their care. During a short break from their mission, the gang are visited by Verdona, 
an alien from the Anodite race known for their boundless mana. It turns out she's their grandmother, that is, Max's wife. Gwen's supposedly magic powers are actually a result of her Anodite heritage. Though she's disappointed by Gwen's refusal to join her, Verdona promises to visit again. In an abandoned desert town called Los Soledad, the gang arrives to investigate a strange creature that's been aging everything it touches to dust. During their investigation, they meet Professor Paradox, a time traveler who is sucked into his botched time travel experiment in this town decades ago. The creature causing havoc here is a result of that same disaster. After discovering the creature is actually Paradox's assistant Hugo, they go back in time and prevent him from ever being sucked into the experiment. Long story short, another day saved. Yay! Kevin sets up a meeting between Ben and the Forever Knights who need his help to slay a dragon they've held prisoner for a thousand years. Turns out though, the dragon is just an alien who desperately wants to go home. After helping the dragon find its ship, Ben lets him leave Earth in peace. With this, his opinion of the Forever Knights is lower than ever, though he's also confused as to their motives. The gang run into a couple of plumber's kids who've been going around sucking all the aliens they can find into a null void projector, thinking it's killing them. These are Manny Armstrong and Helen Wheeler. After clearing up a huge misunderstanding where they kidnap Kevin, they manage to hash things out and Ben reveals the true workings of the Null Void Projector to them. With this knowledge and now aware of other plumber's kids, the two are horrified by the idea that they may have been imprisoning them. To atone for their actions, the two head into the Null Void themselves, determined to make things right. Atea, the princess of the Incursian species, has been kidnapped by the bounty hunter 7-7. If you'll recall, he was once hired by Vilgax back when Ben was a kid. The incursion emperor Milius declares that Earth will be destroyed if his daughter is not returned to him. With help from Milius's major, Raph, the trio head out to find Atea. Tracking her to a dam with Gwim's powers, they're left defenseless with the dam breaks them in front of it. With no time to think, Ben transforms into a new alien, Alien X. The Alien X's godlike ability to manipulate reality itself, the dam is fixed and they're saved but Ben is left in a paralyzed state. While chaos ensues outside, Ben is arguing with two personalities within the mind of Alien X. In order to limit the being's power, the personalities must take a majority vote for any action to be taken. While this seems like an impossible task, Ben's introduction as a third personality allows him to detransform once he's convinced one of the personalities to go along with it. Out in the world, Ben transforms into Swampfire and swiftly dispatches the forces attacking his friends. Once they successfully rescue Atea and return her, Earth is left in peace as the Incursion leave. Kevin's Motivation After being lured into a setup by plumber Magister Gilhill, the trio are commanded to cease all actions as unofficial plumbers. Following up on this, he even confiscates Labrid's plumber badge from Kevin before leaving. Later. Kevin reveals his father was actually a plumber. Though he never got to actually meet the man, his mother's stories of him inspired Kevin to be a just man, a better man. Acting as a plumber is the closest he's ever felt to his father, so Gil Hill's actions are far from appreciated. Later, Kevin and Gwen are attacked by a hybrid, forcing Ben to fight it to protect them. Unfortunately, Gil Hill arrives to see this and decides to arrest the lot of them. Just then, the true mastermind behind all these events appears, the one who reported them to Gil Hill, tortured the hybrid into attacking them, and set up even this face-off right now. The man is none other than Michael Morningstar, now going by Darkstar. While Gwyn escapes, he captures the others and takes them to his base. Before he can really harm them though, Gwen arrives with an army of Dean aliens who want to avenge their master. After being freed, Ben goes on a controlled rampage, destroying Darkstar with several consecutive transformations. As things settle down, Gil Hill apologizes to the trio and reinstates them as official plumbers, 
giving Kevin his own badge, he brings the man closer to his father than ever. Season 2 Now jumping to Season 2, during the fight with a hybrid, Ben is thrown through a malfunctioning teleporter along with the hybrid. Landing on a harsh desert planet, the two are forced to slowly come together and work as a team to survive. Over time, they forge a bond of sorts, and Ben instills a sense of humanity into the hybrid, who reveals his name to be Rain Rassic III, though Ben tells him he's just going to call him Rainy. The night before the final escape, Rainy sacrifices his own arm to save Ben. Without a wasted moment, he transforms into Swamp Fire and reattaches Rainy's arm by adding in some of his own biomatter. Despite the bond they developed, Rainy hates this and tells Ben he's impure now. When the time to escape arrives, Rainy decides to stay back, saying that only pure hybrids may continue on the path set for them. Arriving back to Earth, Ben finds a version of himself, or rather a look-alike, is going around destroying DN alien hives and forever night bases. After tracking him down, Gwen and Kevin question him, stalling long enough for the real Ben to arrive. Once he gets there, it's revealed the clone is actually Albedo, a Galvan, Grey Matter, who's stuck in Ben's form as it's been set as the default for the Omnitrix bearers, and he has a duplicate. After heading to a computer factory, the two Omnitrix bearers fight with transformation after transformation until their watches time out. Devolving to a fist fight, a massive shockwaves occur when their Omnitrix, Omnitrixy, Omnitrixuses? when their watches collide. After the shock weight, Albedo is revealed to have his colors inverted from Ben's, making identification much easier. Before anything further can happen, Asmuth, the OG creator of the Omnitrix, beams in, tells them Albedo was his assistant before, takes away his Omnitrix, sends him to the Null Void, and pieces out. Asmuth's really be badass. Next episode, Gwen and Kevin go to school dance together. In the meantime, Ben as Big Chill is… pregnant? Kind of? He has babies and sends them off into space. Weird episode. Anyway, looking for help with a buster teleporter, the team head to the home of none other than Copper Daniels, the technomancer from when Ben and Gwen were kids. After learning he's been kidnapped by DN aliens, they track him down to Las Soledad. Here, they discover the DN aliens have erected a massive base and force Cooper to create a cloaking device that makes it all invisible. After rescuing Cooper, the gang destroy the cloaking device and flee. However, somehow, the base manages to retain its invisibility field despite their actions. The Forever Knights kidnap ship from Julie in hopes of mass-producing alien tech ships by experimenting on him. Luckily, the gang gets together to save him, and Ship ends up with a new battle spaceship form. A slip-up from Ben results in his parents finally discovering just what he's been up to ever since his summer road trip all those years ago. Despite countless attempts to stop him from fighting the good fight out of concern for his safety, it's clear Ben won't back down from his responsibilities as a hero. Eventually, they come to be proud of his heroic spirit and give him their blessing. Next episode, following a distress call from Helen, Ben heads into the Null Void to help the other plumber's kids. After entering the Null Void, he sees plenty of old faces, both good and bad. Helen's distress call was because of a dangerous foe who's taken over the Null Void and is being a massive drill to break through the dimension wall. On the other hand, Ben finds out Grandpa Max is alive and his sacrifice actually landed him in here where he's been helping the plumber's kids ever since. Along with Max, Helen, Manny, and their comrade Pierce, they break into Amino's base and Ben destroys his machine using Big Chill's freeze breath. When the time comes to leave, Ben is disappointed to find that Max and the plumber's kids plan to stay here till they can put everything right. Back to Earth, the gang meet an amnesic young man named Tyler who's at the center of the disappearance of a key component of the hybrid's plans. The oscillator key, a component of the hyperspace jump gate that'll allow them to transport their fleet to Earth. During their pursuit of the item, they learn Tyler is actually a Dean alien who's kept his human personality. Disguised by himself, 
Tyler decides to sacrifice himself in exchange for destroying the key when the DNA aliens finally find it. However, Ben refuses and saves Tyler, letting the DNA aliens take the key. Turning to his annoyed friends, Ben reminds them that it's their responsibility to protect all of humanity and use the Omnitrix to cure Tyler, removing his Xenocyte. War of the Worlds The hybrids' plans reach their final stage. Asmus' homeworld, Galvin Prime, has fallen. Paradox teleports the Omnitrix creator to Earth, where he has a private conversation with Ben. Meanwhile, Kevin and Gwen go to gather all their allies, even making a deal with Michael Morningstar. Over with Ben, Azimuth reveals the Omnitrix has over a million alien species within it and is sort of Noah's Ark for any species the hybrid destroy. As such, he wants Ben to sit this battle out. With its clear Ben won't heed his advice, Azimuth activates the Watch's master control to at least give Ben the best fighting chance he can get. Ben, Gwen, Kevin, Cooper, Alan, Darkstar, Julie, and Shep make their way to Lost Soledad for their final battle. As they fight through hordes of DNA aliens, Ben reminds Darkstar not to hurt them as they can still be saved. Using the Omnitrix, he detransforms several DNA aliens back to human. Seeing this, Cooper using his technological powers to create DNA repair guns that can perform the same function. With repair guns in hand, the team fight their way to the jump gate. Here, Ben transforms into Waybig in an attempt to uproot the gate and stop the invasion in its tracks. Just as it looks like he'll succeed though, the gate activates, blowing him back in an injured state as the hybrid fleet comes through. As the hybrid fleet invades Earth, Ben awakens in the crater made by Waybig's fall. Deciding to take a different approach, Ben hatches a plan to hold the hybrid commander hostage and order their forces to retreat. Acting on this plan, they head to the control tower and face the hybrid Max sacrificed himself against. While Ben fights him with swamp fire, he learns only the hybrid Supreme have the authority to call off the invasion, so this is pointless. Meanwhile, Gwen in her anodite form frets over an injured Kevin. They're soon surrounded by DNA aliens, but Max and the Plumber's kids arrive from the Null Void and kick their butts. With the hybrid commander held hostage, Ben, Gwen, Kevin, and Azmuth head through the jump gate to find the hybrid supreme. As soon as they make their way through, they're captured. Later, they awaken in a hybrid dungeon and Ben busts out by using the Master Control to become Humongosaur. Together, the team make their way to the hybrid supreme council. The hybrids refuse to call their fleet off, claiming they must eradicate all lesser beings without their genetic purity. Azimuth finally speaks out, telling them their genetic purity is a result of inbreeding that's led to several weakening of their immune and reproductive systems. Deciding on yet another new approach, Ben uses the Omnitrix to fuse all hybrids in the galaxy with random species from the Omnitrix, curing their genetic weaknesses but leaving them furious at no longer being pure. Right as they consider ending themselves, an unexpected party appears. Rain Rassic III has arrived. Turning to his supreme leaders, Rainy delivers an emboldened speech about how their impurity is not a curse and they can live now. After seeing his words to be true, the hybrids vote Rainy as their new hybrid supreme. As his first act, Rainy calls back all hybrid forces from Earth. With the battle finally over, Max decides to stay as a mentor for the plumbers, helpers, and kids. Darkstar disappears. Kevin and Gwen head to an auto show, Paradox and Azimuth return to Galvin Prime, and Ben and Julie head home. Unseen by anyone just yet, the Omnitrix reboots after modifying the hybrid's DNA, locking the master control once more. Vengeance of Vilgax Out in the far reaches of space, the long-forgotten arch-nemesis of Ben Tennyson has been hard at work. Using the Conqueror's Challenge, a duel between the strongest champions of two worlds for ownership over both their planets has taken over ten worlds and in return absorbed the powers of their strongest heroes. Back on Earth, Ben has grown somewhat complacent following the end of the hybrid threat, 
between the victory itself and the many awards he's been given, he's pretty laid back these days, annoying Gwen and Kevin who could use his help with the aliens they're fighting pretty often. Over with Grandpa Max and the plumber's help, they pick up an alarm and head to the source. In a large park, Vilgax's new right-hand man, Siphon, is setting up a machine. After scaring away the local cops, he finishes setting up and projects a force field around the park. With this, Vilgax finally arrives on Earth and issues a conqueror's challenge against Ben, with Earth as the prize. Max and the others try to take him out, but with the powers of the heroes, he's beaten Vilgax proves too much for them. With fighting ease, he defeats them all and declares he'll return in one day to fight Ben Tennyson. Once the gang hear about this, Kevin and Gwen show concern over Vilgax's new powers. Ben, on the other hand, is cockier than ever. Deciding to give him every possible advantage, Kevin takes them to his garage where he unveils a machine he's been working on. With this, he intends to hack into the Omnitrix and restore the master control for Ben's use. Unfortunately for them, Azmuth catches them in the act and warns them against their current actions as a hologram. Before they can call off the attempt though, the watch starts overloading. Kevin desperately tries to get Ben away from the impeding explosion, but they're both caught in it as the garage explodes. Emerging from the rubble, the gang finds things have taken a grim turn from them. Not only have some of Ben's aliens escaped the Omnitrix and run off, Kevin has been permanently coded slash transformed into a mix of several materials. Azmuth calls the trio and gives them an enraged scolding, telling them the aliens will perish if not captured in 24 hours. At Kevin's suggestion, they use the Omnitrix's symbol on Ben's aliens to track them down. One by one, they recover the energy-manipulating chromostone Spider Monkey and Goop. Unfortunately, by the time they're done, the Conqueror's challenge is too close for them to recover the final alien way big himself in time. Placing his faith in Gwen and Kevin, Ben goes to face the challenge while they go after Waybig and bring the alien to him. In the park where the challenge is to occur, Ben finally faces his old nemesis after several years. As they face off, Siphon declares the battle is being broadcast universally. Quickly transforming, Ben leaps into battle against Vilgax, first as Vetre, then Big Chill, and finally Humongousaur. However, each form is defeated by the tentacle-faced conqueror. Luckily, Gwen and Heaven arrive right at the moment with Waybig in tow, recapturing the Titan into the Omnitrix. Ben goes to transform, but ends up as Chroma Stone instead. Worse still, Vilgax absorbs his energy blast with his sword and uses it to shatter Chroma Stone, leaving Ben for dead. His celebration is cut short though, when the Omnitrix's user's protection failsafe kicks in, bringing up the shattered remains of Chroma Stone. It resurrects Ben, now in the form of Diamond Head. As one of Ben's original ten aliens from his childhood, he has enough experience with Diamond Head's abilities to overwhelm Vilgax to defeat him. With the Conqueror's Challenge won, Earth is saved, and Vilgax is banished from the planet. As things settle down, Max tells Ben he jammed the broadcast, so his identity remains a secret still. Season 3 Returning to normalcy, or at least with normal for the Omnitrix trio, over the next days they foil an attempt from Vulcanus to turn Earth into a volcanic wasteland and find a pair of alien brothers who work as repo men. The Vredel brothers, Romboid and Octagon, are trying to repo ships at Bazi's orders, but the gang are able to work things out and Julie even gets a battlesuit mode she can wear a ship in. Later, Ben receives a holographic message from a little girl named Probity asking him to end the civil war over her planet. Feeling for the poor kid, they head to the planet aboard ship. During their time there, Hostilities are ridiculously high from the two factions, the red and blue sides. At one point, Ben transforms into one of his newer aliens, Lodestar, and uses his magnetic powers to confiscate their guns. Later, while Kevin gets pulled into a weapon dealing business Argot's been running on this planet, Ben desperately tries to make things work between the factions. Unfortunately, it never really works out. That is, until Ben accidentally destroys the monument of the people's idol, Zavin. 
Thanks to this, the factions end up uniting as one with Ben as their common enemy. Together, the new Purple Army chases Team Omnitrix off their planet. Later, Probity contacts Ben to tell him things are worse than ever now and that she hates him. Funnily enough, she ends up stumbling on the chest holding Argit and Kevin's profits, making her happier than ever. Some time passes and the trio discover a sinister truth about the small town known as Walton. Their mayor has imprisoned an alien named Decca and has been forcing him to poop gold. So this species' power is being literally filthy rich. Cool. After a series of events that see Decca going feral and Ben returning him to Norrell by getting eaten, the alien leaves. Next episode, a galactic bounty hunter named Sunder sends Bill to the Null Void while his Omnitrix hand is left on Earth. Yeah, don't question it. After being put through transformation after transformation without access to his hand, Ben manages to switch places with his hand. Now on Earth, he defeats Sunder with the aliens he's transformed into by the hands stuck in the Null Void. Once the bounty hunter is beaten and sent to the Void, Ben finally becomes whole again. Due to an earthquake, a hibernating hybrid officer inside the Earth is awoken and goes about his mission. Said mission is to activate a giant hybrid tree monster and use humans as biomass to fuel the creature. Its only goal is to find a nuclear power plant, absorb it, and explode, taking out all of humanity. The officer believes the hybrid lost the war and is following through with their failsafe plan. Luckily, with Rainey's help, Ben manages to convince the officer of their newfound peaceful relationship. The officer ends up sacrificing himself to destroy the tree monster and save Earth. Due to his insecurities regarding his monstrous appearance ever since the Battle of Vilgax, Kevin ends up getting seduced and entranced by a disguised charm caster. Wanting revenge on Gwen for stealing her spellbook all those years ago, she has Kevin kidnap her to steal her powers. Luckily, Ben and Gwen manage to subdue him and break Charm Master's control. Realizing what's happened, they go to confront her anyways, resulting in Gwen having her mana drained by Charmcaster. Later, Kevin finds Charmcaster and tricks her into thinking he's fully on her side now. Then, he tricks her into attacking Gwen believing she has more mana left. Thanks to this, Gwen is able to use a spell to turn the tables and she takes all the energy within Charmcaster. Later, while cleaning up, a talk between Ben and Kevin reveals Gwen has been researching ways to fix Kevin's mutilation in her free time ever since the accident first happened. Kevin and Darkstar team up to retrieve an ancient artifact known as the Domnus Librium from an island. After succeeding in their endeavor, they're able to use the Librum and restore both of themselves to their normal human states, albeit with their powers gone. Later, after a fight with the Forever Knights where Kevin proves he's still a vital team member, Gwen senses Darkstar in him and goes to confront the man. Later, when Ben and Kevin realize what's happening, they go after Gwen. Entering the warehouse where he teamed up with Darkstar, Kevin and Ben see him using the Librum to drain Gwen of her powers. With Ben's attacks against the energy vampire being useless, Kevin sacrifices his restored humanity by grabbing the Librum to save Gwen. With this, both he and Darkstar are returned to their mutated states. While messing around at a mini golf course, the team are visited by a desperate Vilgax who needs their help to defeat Ziskar. The evil ghost freak from Ben's original Omnitrix who has escaped his prison and taken over Vilgaxia in a plan to transform the population into ghostly slaves. Feeling responsible for Ziskar, Ben accepts and the group head to the planet and ship. Unknown to them, Vilgax was the one to free Ziskar in exchange for info on the Omnitrix. Once they're there, they see a sight of Vilgax they'd never imagined one that cares deeply for his person and will do anything to protect them. After they enter the royal palace through a garbage disposal, the team come face to face with Ziskar. As they fight, the evil being tries to possess Vilgax, but Ben jumps into the way and absorbs Ziskar into the Omnitrix. Unfortunately, he transforms into Ghost Freak and gets overtaken by Ziskar after all. Seeing both his enemies in one body, Vilgax tries to kill him, 
but Gwen and Kevin manage to stop him. Working together, they expose Ziskar to sunlight, weakening him enough for Ben to take control and trap him within the Omnitrix for good. Later, as the Vilgaxians hold a victory parade for their ruler, the Omnitrix team head home aboard the ship. Unknown to them, Vilgax has the info he wanted, information about the secrets of the Omnitrix. The team happen upon an alien box with mysterious origins. After going through some humiliating experiences at the hand of the box, they're even further embarrassed to find it was just a toy. A toy for an interdimensional space being from a higher plane of existence, but a toy nonetheless. During a peace mission to deliver an alien baby called the Tiffin to the Pantophage King, Ben is transformed into Wrath, a new alien with a violent, aggressive, short-tempered, and unintelligent personality. Through the mission, he slowly warms up to the Tiffin and rescues it from the Pantophage King when they learn he means to eat the Tiffin. Inner Workings of the Omnitrix While fighting a robot, Ben finds the Omnitrix refusing to function. Suddenly, it engulfs him in a blinding light as it activates a teleportation feature. Panicking, Gwen and Kevin jump after him. The three end up on a jungle-like planet with a green lava stream flowing throughout it. This is the Codon Stream. The Omnitrix is actually a wireless receiver of sorts. All the alien forms it can transform its wearer into are stored in the stream, which the Omnitrix can then access. This is Primus, the biomachine planet built by Azmuth to fuel his greatest creation. As it turns out, Vilgax has arrived here in search of the Omnitrix's secrets. Primus is the secret Ziskar shared with him. The Omnitrix has come here to aid Azmuth in fighting off Vilgax. After following its traces to a cave, the team find Azmuth fighting Vilgax in humongousaur form. Despite the Omnitrix, he's beaten, and the trio are captured as well. With the Omnitrix now in Vilgax's hands, Ben hatches a plan. After tricking Vilgax into transforming into Goop, he tackles the anti-gravity projector of the slime alien and leaves Vilgax vulnerable. With Vilgax thrown into the Codon stream and the Omnitrix returned to Ben, all seems well. And then, Vilgax emerges as a giant. Because why not? After transforming into Waybag, Ben kicks old Gax's butt and yeets him into space. Ben and Max set up a training exercise on a plumber's space station where they trick the plumber's help into thinking Ben's gone bad. After beating them one by one, Ben's happy to find them working together. Toward the end of their exercise, the helpers display a strong sense of responsibility and duty, as well as a willingness to sacrifice themselves for others. With this, the exercise is concluded, and Ben and Max reveal it was a test. Since they've passed, they may now go on to the official Plumber's Academy. The trio are visited by Tetrax, an old friend from Ben's childhood and a diamond head species. Having stolen his people's sacred crystal and sold it to Vilgax during his mercenary days, he was responsible for his planet's Petropia's demise. Now after drawing out Chromastome from within Ben's diamond head form, he returns the crystal to him so he may restore the planet as its guardian. After the Chromastome leaves, Vilgax arrives in search of the crystal Tetrax stole from him. Once he gets a hold of Tetrax, Kevin lets slip the crystal's location to save him. Heading to the rebuilt Petropia, they find the Chromastone's crystal has been broken off by Vilgax, who left after seeing its drain of its power. In a desperate attempt, the Chromastone regrows another crystal and hands it to Ben. As Diamond Head, he takes the crystal to the planet's highest peak and activates the process that will resurrect the population. With this, the Chromastome is revived too and reveals his name is Sugalite. Ben's own Chromastone is still within the Omnitrix. Later, after giving the team a ride back to Earth, Tetrax thanks them and tells them he has a score to settle with Vilgax. Levin's Vengeance After a null void prisoner named Ragnarok escapes the dimension, Kevin sets out in pursuit of him. From Max, Ben and Gwen learn that Kevin's dad, Devin Levin, Max's plumber partner, sacrificed himself to stop Ragnarok's evil schemes. 
Through the series of events, the group end up reuniting to fight against Ragnarok. Ragnarok escapes, the trio follow, they end up on his spaceship and then split up. As events unfold, Kevin tricks his friends into boarding an escape pod and faces his father's killer alone. Ragnarok's plan to drain the sun's energy is revealed and Kevin does his utmost to stop him. After sabotaging the ship, he gets his revenge when Ragnarok is thrown into the sun itself right before the ship explodes. Back on Earth, Gwen breaks down in tears thinking Kevin is gone. Right at that moment, the man shows up unharmed, simply saying he made it and Ragnarok didn't. In her search for a way to cure Kevin, Gwen ends up tampering with the timeline despite warnings from Paradox. After seeing one timeline after another that's far worse than her own, Gwen undoes her entire journey through time and returns to her own reality. The Final Battle On Galvin Prime, Azmuth learns of a break in his facility. Albedo has stolen his latest incomplete creation, the Ultimatrix, a version of the Omnitrix capable of evolving the transformed aliens into a hyper-evolved version of themselves. On Earth, Albedo is seen working on completing the weapon under supervision from Vilgax. Having stolen the watch in his pursuit of returning to his original Galvin form, Albedo is infuriated to find the form locked on the Omnitrix. He theorizes he can reset it if he can get Ben's original Omnitrix, prompting Vilgax to tell him he'll help. Though he claims to no longer be interested in the Omnitrix, he's happy to hurt Ben. Vilgax suggests Ben is helpless without his friends. Taking this into consideration, Albedo abducts Kevin, followed shortly by Gwen. He tries to get Max too, but the seasoned plumber escapes and goes to warn Ben. At Ben's home, Albedo appears on the TV and shows that he has Gwen and Kevin. Despite Max's warnings, he dives headfirst into the trap, unwilling to leave his loved ones in danger. Outside Albedo's lair, the two space shifters face off, turning into Humongosaur, they prepare for battle. When Ben believes them to be on even ground, Albedo reveals the ultimate tricks' functions and transforms into ultimate Humongosaur, easily beating Ben. Vilgax arrives with an army of robots called Bioids and tells Albedo to spare him for the moment. Stepping up to Ben, he gives him a choice between the Omnitrix or his friends. Not even needing to think of it, Ben takes off the watch and hands it to Vilgax, prompting a triumphant evil laugh from him. Arriving on the scene decked out for battle, Max holds off the enemy forces and throws Gwen her spellbook. Thanks to his efforts, she's able to teleport them away. Meanwhile, Vilgax double-crosses Albedo and reveals his true plan. Doning the Omnitrix, he activates the transformation to Humongosaur, only for his bioid army to become a Humongosaur army. Programmed with blank DNA and linked to Vilgax, they're designed to be his personal shape-shifting army. Despite Albedo's ultimate form, he's overwhelmed by sheer numbers and captured by Vilgax. Watching everything happen from the rust bucket, Ben hangs his head in shame at losing the Omnitrix. Racing into the nearby woods, he calls out to Azmuth. Surprisingly, he actually appears. After scolding Ben in an almost parental manner for his despair, something Azmuth says gives Ben an idea. His spirits renewed, the hero heads back to his friends. Following the plan Ben has formulated, Gwyn teleports them onto Vilgax's ship, where they're instantly surrounded by bioids. Turning to Vilgax, Ben demands that he hand over the Omnitrix. At his refusal, he uses the watch's voice command to activate its self-destruction sequence. Though he believes him to be bluffing, Vilgax is knocked out when the watch actually explodes, rendering his bioids useless. On top of that, Kevin is finally restored to his natural, unmutated state because the Omnitrix was the thing keeping him mutated all along. After recovering, Vilgax destroys the ship's controls after setting it on a crash course for Ben's home. While Kevin and Max hold Vilgax off, Ben goes to Albedo to trade his freedom for the Ultimatrix. When he refuses, Ben activates the self-destruct on it as well, prompting Albedo to frantically give it up. 
Putting it on, Ben uses it to beat Vilgax as Swampfire's ultimate variant. Meanwhile, the others have managed to steer the ship away from their hometown of Bellwood and into the ocean. As the ship sinks, Max, Gwen, and Kevin escape. Ben transforms into Jet Tray, and he too escapes Vilgax, who is now in his true form of a giant squid monster. Reuniting with his friends and family above the water, they share a happy embrace. The End with this ends Ben 10 Alien Force. But don't be fooled, this was but one simple challenge and many more were to come. Ben Tennyson continued his adventure in the sequel series Ben 10 Ultimate Alien where he uses the newfound ultimate tricks to kick some more bad guy ass. If you want us to explain Ben 10 Ultimate Alien then please like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment something nice so that we know. For now, have a good day or night and I'll see you in the next part.